Hey, how's it going? My name is Ravi, and thanks for joining me here for this guitar course. I think you're going to find this pretty exciting, because if you were to tell anyone that you're planning to learn over a thousand songs in three weeks, I think they'd give you a look like you're crazy. I know I would, and I'm a guitar teacher. But the reality is, you can actually do this. This is a course that's not so much about learning how to play guitar, as much as it is about learning how to play songs on guitar. And that's an important distinction, because this is by no means a replacement for lessons at your local store or for some of the wonderful course offerings here at Truefire. It, this is rather a precursor to all of that. We're going to have fun. We're going to learn a lot of songs. But there is so much to learn when it comes to learning the guitar. It's actually what I love about it most. I've been playing for 25 years, yet I'm learning new stuff all the time. My guitar teacher tells me he's still learning new stuff. This is a never-ending process. That's the joy of making music. There's so much more to learn and always so much more to play. But today, we're just getting started, and this is an exciting opportunity to learn a bunch of songs. Now, throughout my career as a teacher, I've taught thousands, probably, of guitar lessons. And the same questions often come up at the beginning. This is a new thing, so I'm sure you have a lot of questions. But one of the questions that I get so often is, is it better to start on an electric guitar or an acoustic guitar? Well, it's not a difficult answer. It comes down to what kind of music do you like? Because the most important thing is, is that you're creating the sounds that you enjoy. It doesn't matter whether it's electric or acoustic. Each does have an advantage, though. With an acoustic, you don't need an amplifier. You can play it anywhere that you want. With an electric, you need an amplifier. But the advantage of an electric is that it's a little bit easier to play. You don't have to press the strings as hard. I started on an electric guitar. I wanted to be Angus Young of ACDC, so it made sense to me. But starting out on electric is a little easier on the fingers, and you won't get quite as tired. However, remember, we're doing 20 minutes a day. That's all I'm asking of you, 20 minutes a day for three weeks. So I don't think you're going to get particularly tired, whether you're starting on an electric or an acoustic. Another question that often comes up is from left-handed guitar players. They want to know if they should learn as a left-handed guitar player or if they should convert and learn as a right-handed guitar player. It's a tough question, and I know left-handers, they want to be lefty. But I have to be honest, I think there's a real benefit to learning as a right-hander, mostly because there are more guitars out there in the marketplace for right-handers. It's kind of a right-hander world, unfortunately, for lefties. But Learning right-handed will provide you with many more equipment options. So that's an important thing to consider. And from what I can tell and from the studies and, uh, that I've read, questions that I've asked to other teachers, is that left-handers are not in any way inhibited by learning right-handed. This is awkward to begin with. Playing the guitar is a little... It's different than anything else that we do. So learning it one way or the other shouldn't make too much of a difference. I do encourage you lefties to learn as a right-hander. But if you decide that you want to learn as a left-hander, if it just feels more natural to you, go for it. But then just remember anything that we talk about in the course. If I talk about my right hand, you need to think left. And if I talk about my left hand, you need to think right. I'll try and talk about strumming hands and fingering hands, but just make sure that you make that translation if you're learning as a lefty. Finally, as I mentioned, 20 minutes a day is all I'm really asking of you. Three weeks, 21 days, 20 minutes a day. Now, you can play longer than that. I don't want you to play for less than that each day. You can certainly play for longer, but don't feel that you have to. If you feel in any way that you're tired, getting frustrated, whatever, stop. It's fine. Stop and we'll pick up on the next day. There's a timer on the screen, so you'll be able to see it counting down. And when 20 minutes is up, you'll know that you've done your work for the day. Have fun with it. That's what this is all about. We're going to learn a lot of songs. We're going to have a great time. And I think you've got a wonderful life of guitar playing ahead of you. It's really important that you're always holding the guitar correctly. Good posture, good hand positions are really going to affect the sounds that you're making. So run kind of a checklist every time we begin each day. Check through your hand positions, make sure they're exactly where they need to be. If you get off to a good start every day, you're going to be in really good shape for learning a lot of songs. Now, you probably have seen a lot of guitar players, we cross our legs. 
By crossing our legs, it props the guitar up a little bit higher. It gives us a little bit more freedom of space right in here and allows us to be a little bit more flexible. I also encourage you to push your guitar neck forward just a little bit. This has a lot of advantages. One is it keeps your hand, your left hand, your fretting hand out in front. And it also allows your right hand to just sort of come over the guitar a little bit more easily. Now on an acoustic, it's a bit bulkier, so it's gonna be a little different. But with the electric, as you can see, my right hand is just pretty much parallel to the strings. Posture is really important. We all have a tendency to want to look over the guitar like this and try and see where our fingers are. When you do that, your arm comes up, this angle becomes much harder. It's really important that you try to just stay behind it and make sure that your fingers are where they need to be without leaning over and looking at it. That's going to really affect your positions and your comfort. You want to remain loose, comfortable, relaxed, then you'll sound better. It's amazing. Take the tension out of your body and you'll just sound a whole lot better. Let's talk a little bit about the specifics of exactly how the hands should be. We're going to start with the left hand and what I want you to do is make sure that you keep your fingers close to the ends of the frets. Whenever you put a finger down, automatically try and get it closer to the ends of, ends of the frets. You also want to use your fingertips when you're pressing and you only want to press as hard as you need to in order to get a clean sound. Again, it's all about staying relaxed. You can really hear the tension when you're pressing hard. Let's take a close look at the left hand so you can really see what I'm talking about. Now, when you're putting a finger down, as I said, you want to use your fingertip. So put it right down with a nice arch in your hand. Imagine that you're holding an egg right here in your palm. That will give you the right amount of space. Push down and then slide your finger just towards the end. It shouldn't be on the fret, but anywhere in the second half of the fret. When you're in the first half, you're gonna get a buzz. So always try and place your fingers in the second half of the fret. Keep in mind, that won't always be possible with some chords. If you look here, my first finger has no choice but being in the first half of this fret. That's okay. Sometimes there have to be exceptions to the rules. It's just the way it is. Another thing I want you to look at is the placement of your thumb on your left hand. If you can see, I'm keeping it just about halfway up and I'm keeping it vertical, okay? It's pointing at the ceiling. That's important. You do not want your thumb to come to the side like that or even the other way because it causes your wrist to become very awkward. So keep it straight, keep it relaxed. Imagine that you're just grabbing the guitar with your middle finger and your thumb, you're pinching the neck, and you're holding an egg in your hand. If you can think about those three things, you're gonna have really good hand positions for your left hand. Again, you wanna press as hard as you need to to get a good sound, but don't press too hard. Many beginning guitar players, they press too hard, and you can really hear that tension. Okay, let's go back and take a little look at how the right hand needs to be. Again, you as much as possible, you want your right arm to be parallel with the strings, just an extension of them. With an acoustic, it's unavoidable because of the width of the guitar that you're gonna have an angle. But by pushing the guitar forward a little bit, as I mentioned earlier, it becomes easier to have this relaxed right hand position. This is important because when we're strumming, you don't want the strum to be in the elbow. This is not the motion you want. The motion you want is in the wrist. See the difference? The elbow versus the wrist. As they say, it's all in the wrist. So that's the way you want to approach this. Let's take a close look at my hand too so you can really see how the pick should be held. Now, the way I always tell students to place the pick is to put your hand out like this and curl your fingers in like that, okay? You're making a loose fist. Take your pick and you just place it right on top. Okay, see it's, it's balanced there because of the curl of my fingers. Now all I've got to do is just put my thumb down. I don't have to hold it tightly. I can keep it very loose. Just the weight of my thumb is preventing the pick from falling out. Again, stay loose. It'll sound so much better. Then when you're strumming, again, it's all in the wrist. You see how my wrist just moves? That's exactly what you want to do. And even when you don't have a guitar in your hand, practice this motion. You don't want it to be in the elbow. And another thing you don't want is a twisting of the wrist like that. It's not meant to be twisted, but rather just to pivot up and down like that. Keep it loose and you'll have great sounding chords. 
Finally, always make sure that the guitar neck is slightly elevated from the floor. You don't want the headstock to sink down to the floor. That causes unnecessary strain on your left hand. Keep it up, keep it relaxed, keep it a little bit forward, and you'll do fine. One of the most important things you need to do every day, right at the beginning of the lesson, is to get your guitar in tune. There are a couple of ways to do this. We've got reference pitches right here, so go ahead and click the tuner and check that out. But I encourage you to get just a small electric tuner. These are really easy to use, and they'll get you perfectly in tune every time. It's got a little microphone on it, so if you're playing acoustic, it's easy enough to uh, uh, just play the note, and the little needle will go to the right uh, pitch and tell you whether you're a little low, a little high. And if you're playing electric, you can just plug right into the tuner and you'll get a really nice solid signal and a very accurate reading. I can't emphasize to you enough how important it is to start every lesson in tune. It will add so much to the pleasure of the music that you're making because if you're out of tune, it just isn't going to sound right. Every day, first thing, tune up. Now, before we get started, I want to address one issue. You may be playing these songs and singing along and think that they're sounding great, and then turn on the record that you've known and loved for many years and try to play along, and what happens? It doesn't work. Well, there's a reason for this, and don't let it discourage you. A lot of times as an accompanist, as a guitar player, I have to change the chords that I'm playing in order to accommodate a certain singer's range. This is the reason why you can hear the same song recorded by a bunch of different singers and it's actually going to be played with different chords. Let me give you a quick example. If I were to take a song that we all know, Happy Birthday, and play it like this. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Now look, I could change those chords and play it like this. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. It sounds, it works in both, in both ways, but it sounds a little different. So just be aware of that, that that may happen, and don't let it discourage you, because as you learn more chords, you'll be able to accommodate the same songs in a different way. Now the fun really begins. We're going to start learning chords, and the first chord we're going to learn is A major. And just so you know, anytime you see a letter just by itself, it automatically means that it's going to be a major chord. You might see the word major after it, you might see an M-A-J after the letter, or you might just see the letter, but all of it means a major chord. So, whenever you see an A, think A major. So here we go with A major, and uh, let me just show you how to finger it. What makes the A major chord easier than a lot of other chords is that all the fingers are placed in the second fret, okay? So we're going to be right here in the second fret. And when I talk about uh, which strings we're going to place our fingers on, we're always counting from the bottom up to the top, or from the highest pitch string to the lowest, okay? So the first finger we're going to place is our first finger, and we're going to place it in the second fret, because all of our fingers are going to be in the second fret for the A chord, we're going to place it on the third string. So one, two, three, right here, first finger on the third string in the second fret. We're going to place our middle finger right above that, on the fourth string, one, two, three, four, right there, still in the second fret. And then our third finger, we're actually going to place uh, on the second string. One, two, right here. Okay, so that's the way the A chord looks. Take a good look, and remember, keep your fingers close to the ends of the frets. You'll get the best sound that way, just as much as you can. Obviously, you can't have them all at the ends of the frets, but do your best. And use your fingertips, keep your thumb behind the neck, and you'll be in good shape. So, with your fingers placed carefully, let's go ahead and strum all the strings to make our first chord, the A major chord. Okay, there it is. Now, yours may not quite sound like that. It might take a little bit of practice. You may have a couple clunkers or muted notes in there, and that's okay. It happens to all of us uh, every time. You just have to adjust your fingers, keep your thumb back, use your fingertips, press maybe a little bit harder, but only as hard as you need to. You don't want to press too hard. And let's try it again, strumming the notes. And just to make sure, the best thing to do anytime you learn a new chord is play each string individually and make sure that everything is sounding perfectly clean. All right? So as soon as you get that, we can really start practicing some strumming exercises.
So now you've got that A chord down. So let's practice some strumming to go along with it. Go ahead and get set up. Make sure that your fingers are close to the ends of the frets. Use your fingertips, keep your thumb back behind the neck. You'll get better sounds. And let's strum. We're just gonna do down strums. Keep it in the wrist, okay? No elbow action, but rather just in the wrist, okay? See how my wrist pivots like that? So, we're gonna just do straight down strums and we're gonna count to four. One, two, three, four. Those are the beats, kinda like when you tap your foot. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Strum. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Go ahead and loop that. Keep practicing straight down strums. And then we should also practice some alternate strums or down up strums. They're not much harder. It's just that instead of skipping the up strum, we're actually gonna strum the strings. And instead of counting one, two, three, four, we're gonna count one and, two and, three and, four and. When you say the number, you strum down. When you say the and, you strum up. It's a really good idea to count out loud also. So let's try this together. Ready? One and two and three and four and 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 go ahead and loop that one, two, three, four. 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 So now you've got the A chord down. And there are some songs that just use one chord. I think, though, honestly, you need to learn one more chord before you can really get some pleasure out of playing some songs. But there are one chord songs. And take a look at the list. You might see one that you recognize. For me, I remember it was probably the early days of MTV because I have the video of Eddie Grant singing Electric Avenue in my mind. Do you remember the song? It goes like this. Just strum the A chord down. It's like that. We're gonna rock down to Electric Avenue. Then we'll take you higher. You remember it? We're gonna rock down to Electric Avenue. Then we'll take you higher. So take a look at that list and see if any of these one chord songs pique your interest. If they do, strum them. Try it. Get some practice in on that A chord. And I'll see you tomorrow when we're going to learn a new chord. Welcome back. We've got some material to review now. So let's have some fun with that A chord and practice strumming it. Go ahead and get set up. Remember, keep your fingers close to the ends of the frets. Use your fingertips. Don't press too hard, just as hard as you need to in order to get a clear sound. So go ahead, make sure that your A chord is set up and that you're happy with it. And then let's just practice some straight down strums. Ready? One, two, three, four. 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 Go ahead and loop that. And then let's also review some down up strums. Remember, when we say the numbers, we strum down. When we use the word and, we strum up. 
So here we go, alternate strumming. One, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. 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 Go ahead and loop that. And really remember with your strumming hand, keep all the motion in your wrist. You don't want it in the elbow. A nice, loose, light wrist will give you a great sound. This is uh, really the way to, that you're going to be able to play a lot of songs. So just getting these simple strums down is going to get you a long way. Have fun with it. One, two, three, four. 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 Now we're going to learn the E major chord. And this is a great follow up to the A major that you just learned because there's so many songs that you'll be able to play with just these two chords. So the E major, or also just known as E, is played like this. Okay, so once again, we're gonna place our first finger first. That's the index finger. And we're gonna put this on the third string in the first fret. Okay, so it's gonna be over here. Let's count up from the bottom three strings. One, two, three. Here we go. And we're gonna put it right towards the end of the fret. Remember, by being closer to the end of the fret, you get a better sound without having to press too hard. Next, we're gonna place our middle finger, the second finger. This is gonna go all the way up on the fifth string in the second fret. Let's count up. One, two, three, four, five. Now, our third finger is gonna go right underneath that on the fourth string, also in the second fret. One, two, three, four. So place your fingers using your fingertips close to the ends of the frets. Don't press too hard, but just press hard enough. And let's strum the chord down. Hopefully you're getting a nice clean sound of each string. Play each string by itself. If you're not getting a really clean sound, just make some simple adjustments, adjust the pressure a little bit. You know, whatever you need to do. All of our hands are a little different. Let's try it again. So let's combine the A and the E chords. Now I'm using an acoustic, so for you acoustic players, just notice that my arm, my right arm here, it's at a slightly different angle than it is with an electric, a little bit more up. However, that isn't going to change the fact that everything is going to be in my wrist. As they say, it's all in the wrist. So remember, keep the motion in your wrist, not in your arm. So let's set up for the A chord. Fingers near the ends of the frets. Use your fingertips. And then when we move to the E chord, remember, keep that first finger down. Okay, A chord. Slide your first finger into the first fret for the E chord. And then come back up for the A chord. We're gonna do eight strums of A, eight strums of E, and then we'll loop it. So you get plenty of practice. Ready? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. To E. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. To A. One, Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. To E. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So go ahead and loop that. And then let's also practice doing this down up. 
Okay, so instead of just straight down strums, counting one, two, three, four, we're gonna do alternate strums. Down, up, down, up. And I'm gonna count one and, two and, three and, okay? So, on the numbers, we strum down, on the ands, we strum up. Let's try that, here we go. Set up for the A chord. One and, two and, three and, four and. One and two and three and four and to the E. One and two and three and four and to the A. One and two and three and four and to the E. One and two and three and four and. So go ahead and loop that. And if you're having a hard time keeping up with me, don't worry about it, you'll get there. Just do the best that you can for now. If it takes you a little bit of time to make that chord change, that's okay. The more you practice it, the faster you'll get, and you'll really start to enjoy playing these chords. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, So now, with the A chord and the E chord, there are a bunch of songs that you can play. For example, take uh, Sublime's What I Got. It starts with the E chord, and then it goes to the A chord. And just for example purposes, we're just going to keep the strumming real simple, like that. Two strums of E, two strums of A. Cause loving is what I got. Loving is what I got. So you get the idea. Tomorrow we're going to add in some strumming techniques because when you combine strums with chords, you really get the feel for a song. And I'll just give you a taste of that on the same song so that you can see it. Loving is what I got. Loving is what I got. So I think you get the idea. Now, of course, you can play much more traditional songs, too, using the A chord and the E chord. Um, let's see, like, like, London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. So now take a look at the list of songs that you can play using just these two chords. Have some fun with it and spend the rest of the time today exploring your new repertoire. Okay, now you've got a couple of chords down. You've got the A major and the E major chord down. So the trick now is to put them together. And I think you'll realize you can play a lot of songs just with these two chords. So first, let's just practice strumming these straight down strums. We're going to do eight strums of A, followed by eight strums of E, and then we'll go back and repeat that and use the loop function so that you can really practice them and get really good at changing these chords. So here we go, I'm gonna count us off. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Change to E. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, Back to A. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So go ahead and loop that. And let's take a closer look at the hands so you can really see them. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, 
Now, as you're trying to learn some of these songs, I think you'll realize that they have different characteristics in the way that they strum. Now, strumming can be kind of complicated, and I don't want this to get in the way of you enjoying playing the guitar. On the other hand, though, as you learn some new rhythms, you'll start enjoying these songs a lot more. So I think we should go ahead and tackle some of these. Take your time, learn them, enjoy them, and they'll get easier and easier as you do more of them. The first strum I want to talk about is kind of a rock blues strum. Right now, we've just been really working on straight down strums. Now, we've also talked a little bit about down up strums. And so now we're just going to kind of, I don't know, we're going to vary it up a little bit. Think of the groove in your mind. So if you're playing like a rock blues kind of rhythm, over here with your picking hand, you're basically just going to strum down, and not even the whole chord, just part of the chord, like this, watch. Kind of gives you that blues rock kind of sound. On the other hand, you might try just separating the lower part of the chord from the upper part of the chord. It sounds a little bit more complicated than it really is. Watch me do it. It's like pick, pick, strum, pick, pick, strum. It doesn't have to be particularly accurate. Don't worry about, about exactly how many strings you're strumming. You just want that feel of the deeper part of the chord to the higher part of the chord. Try that with me. So there might be some songs that sound better if they're played like this. And then there's some that might sound better if they're played like this. all up to you and how you hear the song. These are just different ideas of how you can capture it. Now, if it's a slower song, maybe you just want to do each string by itself, like the way that we practice the chords. You could go down and then back up. Maybe you're interested in reggae, so you might want to try more of a reggae sound. You might go something like this. Down, down, up. Down, up, down. Down, up. Down, up, down. Down, up. Down, up. These are all just suggestions. Use your ear, use your knowledge of the song, and just have fun and experiment a little bit. The more you do it, the better you'll get. So let's go ahead and put this together now. We've got our A chord, and we're going to switch between the A and the E. So go ahead and set up for both of those, the A, and just practice that switch to the E, and then back to the A. Now I know we've already done a lot of strumming practice on that, so what we're going to do differently here is we're going to put a little bit of a strum rhythm in there. Let's go with that sort of blues rock feel, you know, where we're doing this. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Think about that. And I'm going to count us off, and we'll play it together. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two, three. Four. Four, one, two, three, four. Go ahead and loop that. I also just want to mention one other thing. You probably notice that my thumb is coming a little bit over the neck, and you probably see a lot of guitar players who do that. Yet I'm telling you to keep it back like this. I want you to keep it back like this. I've been playing for a long time, and I've developed some 
different techniques and playing to accommodate my own hands. You'll do that too, but it's really important to learn to play correctly first. So it's one of those situations where I want you to do what I say, not as I do. Now, you've got two chords down, the A and the E. Look at the list. Look at how many songs you can play with just these two chords. Spend the rest of the time today playing some of your favorite songs off of that list. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, welcome back. Let's start out today by reviewing some strumming. So let's divide the chords as we talked about earlier. We'll do the lower part and then strum the whole chord. Like that. And then we'll also, for good measure, throw in a chord change. So we'll go from A to E, back to A, and so on and so forth. And be sure you loop this so you can get plenty of practice on it. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Go ahead and change. Let's change back to A. Go back to E. Back to E. Go ahead and loop that. Now we're really going to add to your arsenal of sounds. We're going to learn the D major chord, or just sometimes known as the D chord. So again, we're going to start with your first finger. We're going to place that on the third string in the second fret. One, two, three. My third string in the second fret. Your second finger is going to go on the first string, also in the second fret. So right there on the first string. Your third finger is going to go on the second string, this time in the third fret, just next door. One, two. So here you go. Now you've got the D chord. Let's strum it. Now it's best with the D chord to just strum five strings. We're going to leave out the low string here. This isn't essential, but I think you'll like the sound a little bit better. Let's try each string by itself. Making sure that we have a really nice, clean sound. That's the D the D major chord. So now we're going to combine the D and the A, two major chords. So let's get set up for D major. Make sure that all your fingers are near the ends of the frets. Use your fingertips. Press as hard as you need to, but don't press harder than you have to. So here we go. We're going to do eight strums of D and then eight strums of A. And as you move your fingers, Realize that your first finger doesn't have to move at all. It's in the same place for both the D chord and the A chord. You ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. A chord. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. D chord. One, Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Back to the A. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Go ahead and loop that, and let's also take a closer look. One, two, three, four. 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 So 
So now we've got another chord to play with. We can mix D and A and E and come up with all sorts of interesting songs. Take a look at that list. You'll see that there are a lot of things. Like, for example, just by using A and D, we could do the, uh, uh, the Stones' Just My Imagination by playing four strums of A and four strums of D. It's just my imagination Running away with me Cause it's just my imagination Running away with me That's one example. Uh, you could do Feeling Alright by Traffic. Feeling alright Not feeling too good myself Feeling alright Not feeling too good myself Now, other things that you could think about if you were playing songs before using the A chord and the E, you could instead play them with the D chord and the A. This is just an example of what we were talking about before, where songs are played using different chords, maybe because the singer prefers to sing in a certain key. So if you were playing some of them with A and E and it didn't sound quite right, try it with D and A. You can see it on the song list. We've indicated there which ones you might try using D and A instead. So go ahead and look at that list, pick out a few songs you want to play, and spend the rest of today's lesson playing the songs that you love. So, let's review the D and the A major chords. Set up for D, and then we're going to switch to A, and you're going to keep your first finger in the same place for both chords, so that makes the, the change quite a bit easier. So let's go ahead and do eight strums of D, and then eight strums of A. One, two, three, four. 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 Go ahead and loop that a bit and practice it. And let's also try doing some down up strums on DNA. We're going to do one and, two and, three and, so on and so forth. Okay, remember, up strums on the ands. One and, two and, three and, four and. 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 Go ahead and loop that, and let's also take a closer look. So now we're going to practice some strumming using the D and the A chords. And the kind of strum we're going to do is the lower part of the chord and then the rest of the chord. The root, then the rest. Now we don't have to be very specific on which strings we're strumming, we just want that kind of sound. So we'll do that maybe four times. And then we'll switch the chord to the next one, to the A chord. And we'll do that four times. So I'm going to count us off. Let's play it together and make sure you loop. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Get ready to change. One, two, three, four. One, two. Back to D. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two, three, 
four. One, two, three, four. Go ahead and loop that. Now here's another rhythm to practice, very similar, although this time we're going to use the A chord and the E chord. So we're really combining things now. Now instead of just using the lower and the higher like we just did, we're going to use the lower and then for the higher we'll go down and up. So think one, two and three, four and one, two and three, four and, and then we'll switch the chord and do the same thing on the E. We'll go back and forth, I'll count us off, and make sure you loop it afterwards. Here we go. One, two, and three, four, and 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 one, two, and three, four, and. Go ahead and loop that. Now with these three chords under your belt, there are quite a few songs that you can play. Take a look at the list and pick out some of the tunes that use A and E and some of the tunes that use D and A. I think you'll be surprised what's there. Well, now you've got three chords down. You've got the A, you've got the D, and then you've got the E. So with these three chords, you can play a lot of songs. But first, you've got to practice playing them together and getting those changes pretty smooth, okay? So let's set up for the A chord. Remember your hand positions. You want to keep your fingers close to the ends of the frets. You want to press only as hard as you need to. Not too hard, but hard enough. And what's also important when you're switching between chords is recognizing which fingers you can leave down. You may have to slide them back and forth, but you don't necessarily have to pick them up. For example, the A chord, when you move that to the D chord, your first finger stays in the same place. You don't have to move it at all. And then when you go to the E chord, you're just going to slide your first finger back to the first fret and put the other two fingers down. And then coming back to the A chord, slide your first finger back into the second fret and put your other two fingers down. Really work on that. Try and see those opportunities where you don't have to pick up a finger. So. Here we go, I'm going to count it off, and we're going to do four strums of A, four strums of D, four strums of E, four strums of A, and then we're going to loop that, okay? So here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. To D, one, two, three, four. And to E, one, two, three, Four. Back to A. One, two, three, four. Stay on A. One, two, three, four. To D. One, two, three, four. To E. One, two, three, four. And back to A. Two, three, four. Go ahead and loop that. Have fun with it. And then let's also get a close up of my hands so you can really see the positions. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two. Three, four. One, two Three, four. One, two, 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 three, four. One, two. So now look at that list of songs that you can play. The A, D, and E chords allow you to play so many songs. I'm sure there are plenty that you can choose from that you've always wanted to play. Even on a festive occasion. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to whoever. Happy birthday to you. Or if you're more in a Beatles mood or something like that, you could do twist and shout. Come on, come on, baby, now. Come on, baby. Twist and shout. Twist and shout. Or maybe a uh, little Van Morrison. Gloria. Gloria. Or maybe you're more in the mood for a reggae groove. Stir it up. Little darling, stir it up. Nobody does it better than Bob. So take a look at all these new songs you can play. Spend the rest of today's lesson experimenting. Find some songs that you like and have a ball. So now we're going to try another strum pattern using the A, the D, and the E chord. We're going to do all down strums, but we're going to be a little rhythmic. We're going to do two A's, and then we'll do two quick D's, and then two E's, and then back to D for two quick ones. I think by practicing the chords this way, you'll recognize this in some songs. Let me count us off. One, two, three, four. A, A, D, D, E, E, D, D, A, A, D, D, E, E, D, D, A, A, D, D, E, E, D, D, a, A, D, D, E, E, D, D. Go ahead and loop that. And I know that might be a little fast, but you'll get there, I'm sure. So now, look at all the songs you know how to play. Take the rest of the time today and just pick a few songs out that you'd like to learn. Go ahead and use the chords that you learned and play them. Have fun. That's why we're here. Now we're going to learn the G chord, and you're going to spread your fingers across the entire width of the fretboard to learn this one. It's a big sound, really cool chord. Okay, so we're going to place our first finger first. We're going to put it on the fifth string in the second fret. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to place our second finger right above that on the sixth string in the third fret. One, two, three, four, five, six. Our third finger is going to go all the way down on the first string in the third fret. Okay, so right there. Now, let's strum it and see how it sounds. Let's check for clarity, one string at a time. And let's strum it again. Sound good? I hope so. So now we're going to put together the D and the G chords. And this is great because these chords work so well together. So let's set up for D. Fingers towards the end of the frets. Use your fingertips. And then when we go to G, we're going to have to move all of our fingers. So this is going to take a little bit of practice. There's G. Every finger has to move. Not necessarily too far. Your third finger just moves down a string. But these other two have to come all the way up. So that's going to take some practice. Let's go ahead and strum these chords. We're going to do eight strums of D, and then eight strums of G, and then we'll go back and repeat that. So here we go. I'm going to count off. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and back to D. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And to G. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's take a close up of that. One, two, three, four. One, two, 
So now that we got the G chord down, we've got some options. Some of those songs that you were playing before, maybe using A and E, you might want to try using G and D instead. This goes back to what I was talking about earlier, where sometimes we have to make some modifications with the chords that we're playing in order to accommodate a certain singer's range. So if the songs weren't sounding quite right to you before using A and E, try some of those same songs using G and D. Let me just give you a quick example. London Bridge is falling down. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down. See, so you can do it like that, or, or... Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Mama's gonna buy you a rocking bird. You see what I'm saying? Look through that list and see what else you can find. So now we're going to put together the D, the A, and the G chords. So set yourself up for D, keep your fingers close to the ends of the frets, use your fingertips. And when we go to the A chord, we can just leave our first finger right where it is. See that? Here's the D, and then the first finger just stays where it is to make the A chord. Then when we go to the G, we pick everything up, spread our fingers out, and make that G chord. And then come back to the D. So we're going to do four strums of D four strums of A, four strums of G, four strums of D. And then we're going to start the loop over again. All right, so here we go. Let me count off. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four to A. One, two, three, four to G. One, two, three, four to D. One, two, three, Stay on D. One, two, three, four to A. One, two, three, four to G. One, two, three, four to D. One, two, three, four. Go ahead and loop that, and then let's also take a closer, closer look. One, two, three, four. One, two, So now, also using G, let's put three chords together, D, G, and A, and you'll find some songs. It's the same idea. You might have been playing some songs before using A, D, and E. Well, you know, let's try them with D, G, and A instead, and maybe they'll sound a little bit better to you. You might prefer them in that key. Uh, for example, one of the songs that I remember from when I was a bit younger, I love rock and roll. Another dime in the jukebox, baby. I love rock and roll. Okay, Getting that kind of rock strum going there. Or another one I used to play in my high school band. I see the bad moon rising. I see the vanishing in the haze. So you get the idea. Try these songs out. 
So just with those chords, A, D, E, and G, I'm sure you can find a lot of songs that you want to play off of that list. Try some of them with different chords. See what makes sense to you. See what sounds good. We've notated some of the proper chords that are going to sound best with the particular songs. Welcome back. I think we're going to do some strumming exercise to start off today. So now let's practice strumming a rhythm using the D chord, the A chord, and the G chord. And I think for this one, let's just do down, down, up, 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 down, down, up. So we'll do the D chord, the A chord, and then we'll stay on the G chord for a little bit longer. We're gonna count it one, two, and three, four, and, okay? D, A, then G. And we're gonna keep repeating that, so make sure you loop it to get pl plenty of practice. Here we go. One, two, and three, four, and 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 one, two, and three, four, and. Make sure you loop that. For this strumming exercise, let's go back to one of those kind of rock blues sounds. We're just gonna play the lower parts of each chord. We're gonna use the A chord, the D chord, and the E chord. And we're just gonna strum the lower part in this kind of a rhythm. Okay? The A, the D, and the E. One, and two, and three, and four, and 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 one, and two, and three, stay on the A, one, and two, and three, and four, and 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 one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and Make sure you loop that and get plenty of practice because that'll really give you a nice feel for some blues songs and some good rock stuff. That song list is really growing. So for the rest of this lesson, just take a look at it, realize how many songs you can play, pick a few that you like, and go ahead and practice them.